Welcome everyone to another video, which is also my first countdown list video. We know a good amount of information relating to how some locations fared in the Great War, and it made me wonder, which places were hit the hardest during that fateful day in 2077? I decided to create a scale similar to the Mercalli Intensity Scale, which was one of the first attempts to classify earthquake intensity based on the destruction that could be observed. So let me introduce my fallout intensity scale, which focuses primarily on the destruction from the Great War, but also takes into account some of the post-war destruction and circumstances as well. Class 0 means there was no nuclear damage, only damage and decay as a result of the collapse of society. Class 1 means there is minor damage from nuclear weapons, low levels of radiation are present, and some structural damage to light and unreinforced buildings. Small or light objects are displaced by the shockwave. This usually applies to the area farthest from the detonation site. Class 2 means moderate damage from nuclear weapons. Medium-sized objects, including pets or people, would be heavily displaced by the shockwave if caught in the open. All non-reinforced buildings will sustain damage, some considered unsafe to live in. Chances of fire due to heat and structural damage is present but not guaranteed. Low or moderate levels of radiation from fallout. Class 3 means severe damage from nuclear weapons. Large objects like cars are displaced from the shockwave. Nearly all unreinforced buildings are destroyed or uninhabitable. Reinforced buildings sustain damage. Some are considered uninhabitable as well. Fires from the heat and structural damage are present. Radiation from fallout is high, and dangerous exposure to electromagnetic radi radiation from the detonation is likely. And class 4 means extreme damage from nuclear weapons. All objects except for the most blast-resistant buildings are destroyed or uninhabitable. Only specialized protective shelters remain functional. Combustible materials are burned easily due to the intense heat, and fires are guaranteed and can be extensive. People are extremely unlikely to survive unless in specialized protective shelters. Radiation from fallout and from electromagnetic radiation from the blast is very high. This describes the areas closest to the detonation site. So with that in mind, we are going to evaluate the locations of Washington DC, Boston, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Reno, Salt Lake City, Pittsburgh, Las Vegas, Denver, Chicago, and Bakersfield, because they have enough written lore or observable destruction in-game to make a good judgment. There's a lot to get through, so let's start at the bottom of the list and work our way up to the most destroyed locations, and let's see if you agree. Number 11, Reno. The city of Reno, Nevada is known as New Reno in Fallout 2, and is one of the main settlements that you can visit. We can use some of the written lore along with what we see in Fallout 2 to assess the damage done to the city. According to established lore, the remote location of Reno, coupled with its location close to large mountain ranges, meant that it did not sustain damage from nuclear weapons. Modern day Reno had a population of 246,000 people in 2019, so it seems reasonable to assume that in 2077, in the Fallout universe, the city was similarly not heavily populated, and that, coupled with it not being the capital of Nevada, makes it seem reasonable that it would not have been targeted by the Chinese. The lore states that the only damage sustained by the city was a result of looting and property damage. Looking at the city in-game, we can see that most buildings look surprisingly intact. A few of them seem to be in states of disrepair with damaged roofs and some damaged walls. The damage seems to back up the claim that it is the result of decay over time. Even some of the most delicate structures appeared to have survived, since the large sign at the entrance of the city really does look quite undamaged. While many of these structures certainly have been repaired with time, like perhaps the sign, since Reno is known as New Reno in Fallout 2, it would make sense that the sign would probably say New Reno if it had been repaired similar to the iconic Las Vegas sign being remade to say New Vegas. Due to this limited destruction, it is one of the more populated places in Fallout 2, where people are attracted by the gambling, prostitution, and drugs. 
It does not appear that nuclear fallout or much radiation at all is a concern in New Reno. Evaluating all these sources makes this an easy location to assess as Category 0, meaning there was no nuclear damage. Number 10, Las Vegas. The center of one of the fan base's favorite entries, Las Vegas suffered a much different fate from that of other major U.S. cities. Mr. House, an incredibly intelligent inventor and businessman, knew that a nuclear exchange between the U.S. and China was a certainty and went about preparing to protect Vegas, his hometown. With the use of electronic jammers and laser defense weapons, 59 of 77 incoming missiles were electronically neutralized, and another 9 were destroyed by the laser defense system. The remaining nukes fell in areas surrounding the city, sparing downtown Vegas from nuclear destruction. However, the fallout from the surrounding detonations beset the city fairly rapidly, and in short order had killed almost all of the inhabitants. With Mr. House unable to do much for the next few decades, the city decayed and was fought over by tribalistic groups of survivors, the city now reborn as New Vegas. The fact that New Vegas saw no direct hits and was not reported to have sustained damage from the few that did detonate around the city would seem to make this a class zero level of destruction. However, nuclear fallout ended up killing the majority of residents that were spared fiery annihilation, so I would classify the destruction of New Vegas as a class one, with the only damage being the result of radiation and subsequent post-apocalyptic damage. Of the nukes that detonated, Two targeted Black Mountain, which survived remarkably well, one at Cottonwood Cove, where the crater can be observed, and one supposedly detonated well above Nellis Air Force Base, apparently high enough that the base was not completely destroyed, and the others blew up in unknown places. That would mean the ruin that is seen in Freeside and on the outskirts of New Vegas are not the result of nuclear weapons. Now I think this is a good opportunity to talk about something that is a pretty wide misconception. Nuclear weapons are designed to detonate at a certain height above their target for a very specific purpose. Some nuclear weapons are designed to impact the ground before detonating, but those are the exception and are used against so-called hard targets, which are targets that are built to survive a nuclear strike. The airburst is used in order to maximize the strength of the shockwave. Depending on many factors, a detonation between 100 and 1000 meters can cause the downward propagating shockwave to hit the ground and begin traveling parallel to the ground. If done right, it will combine with the force of the shockwave that traveled incident to the Earth's surface, causing constructive interference and making the shockwave much more powerful. There is an interesting effect, though, of lower amounts of fallout with an airburst, since the detonation sucks up less material being farther from the surface since it has been established that the nuclear weapons and fallout were designed to give off more fallout, perhaps most of the nukes in the fallout universe were meant to detonate on impact. Number 9, Boston. Being the primary location for Fallout 4, we get both written lore and the opportunity to explore the city ourselves and see the destruction. Fallout 4 has the unique added benefit of letting us witness the detonation of a nuclear weapon right before being brought into the safety of Vault 111. Written lore states that the city itself had very few direct hits and that the nuclear detonation that we witnessed in the intro to Fallout 4 was intended to strike a military target in that area. That is among the few nuclear detonations known to have hit the greater Boston area, which is very surprising given how major of a city it is. The other apparent site of a detonation is the Cambridge Crater, which is still highly radioactive but was obviously not as destructive as the device that created the glowing sea. The reasoning for this is never explained, and it's honestly difficult to speculate why Boston would not have been more heavily targeted, considering major cities of similar or even smaller size that we speak about in this list were more heavily targeted. Regardless, the damage done by the glowing sea device did enough damage to completely level the area and destroy all buildings except for an ultra-fortified military installation and a few purpose-built nuclear shelter bunkers. Even after 210 years from the time of the Great War, nature has not been able to reclaim the area that came to be known as the Glowing Sea, and radiation storms frequently originate from there. When exploring Boston, 
it becomes apparent that most of the damage was not induced by the nuclear warhead that detonated, but some damage from the shockwave is certainly possible. Looking at the shockwave at the beginning of Fallout 4, it seemed like it had enough force to send small objects flying, knock people over and possibly move objects with large surface areas. Given the relative distance between Sanctuary, where the sole survivor witnesses the detonation, and the impact point on the other side of the map, it is reasonable to assume that the city of Boston had a shockwave of similar intensity. A lot of the destruction seen in Fallout 4 could be attributed to decay over time and the violence that ensued after the Great War. It seems reasonable to assume that some of the damage was due to or instigated by the nuclear detonation that created the Glowing Sea and the Cambridge Crater. The nuclear submarine, the Yangtze, is found damaged in the Boston Harbor because it struck a mine after firing off most of its submarine-based ballistic missiles. Where they were when they fired the missiles, we don't know, but it doesn't seem like they targeted Boston since we know of only a few large detonations inside and outside of the city proper. The only areas with persistent environmental radiation are in and around the glowing sea, and even then, the radiation levels are not extremely high. Due to what we see in Boston itself, and knowing that only one large detonation occurred well outside downtown Boston, and one smaller detonation in the city proper, I think a level 1 classification of minor damage from nuclear weapons is appropriate. A portion of the city's outskirts were massively devastated, while the downtown area seems relatively unaffected by the bombs, except for the crater found amongst the residential area. It seems to have suffered greatly in the meantime due to natural decay and violence, but not much of it seems the direct result of nuclear weapons. Number 8. Denver I decided to include Denver on this list with one very important caveat. We know just a little bit about Denver from Fallout New Vegas, but what was said in New Vegas corresponds to how Black Isle intended to design Denver in Van Buren. With that in mind, I will actually be using information from Van Buren, so while it is not canon, there is a good chance that it may be right, or at least mostly right. The bits we learn about in Fallout New Vegas confirm the most unique aspect of the city, that it is overrun by dogs. That itself is kind of interesting, but Van Buren has some concept art for Denver, as well as lore about the destruction that occurred there. If you watched my state's video, then you know that Denver had a really rough go in the lead up to the Great War. In just a short time prior to the Great War, there were massive riots that caused portions of the city to burn. As people fled the destruction and riots, the highways were clogged, and that is when the bombs struck. We know very little about how many or what kinds of bombs fell on Denver, but we know that with so many people stuck on the roads and not in shelters, that the majority of people died. One of the design documents states that the bombs destroyed everything else in the city that hadn't already been destroyed but it also killed everyone. That seems to contradict the concept art, where we see buildings and overpasses intact or relatively intact. It also seems to fly in the face of other written lore that states that the people that managed to survive in a town overrun by vicious dogs had to live in the tops of buildings where they were safe from the dogs. This would imply that not everything was destroyed, but conflicting information is part and parcel of early game development. Looking at the concept art, we see damaged buildings with bridges built across to allow people to go from building to building without having to go to the dog-infested surface. I'm going to go with this interpretation since it is backed by both written lore and concept art. It would mean large structures and reinforced structures received some damage at best, and the cars on the roads did not seem displaced by a shockwave. Due to this, and not knowing how many bombs went off and where, I'm going with a class 2 or moderate damage from nuclear weapons. Seems like a good portion of the destruction came after the bombs and the major obstacle for people living there are hordes of dogs, hence why it would have been called a dog city. Number 7, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is shown in the Fallout 3 DLC that bears the city's post-apocalyptic name, The Pit. Prior to the Great War, Pittsburgh was still heavily involved in steel manufacturing, which is an interesting difference between modern-day Pittsburgh, which has seen a decline in manufacturing, and Fallout Pittsburgh. Due to this, the lore is definitive in stating that the city was targeted for destruction, 
but it is unknown whether the city itself suffered many direct hits. Most of the information we get about the effects of nuclear weapons on the pit have to do with the effects of radiation and the interaction between radioactive fallout and the industrial chemicals used in manufacturing. This interaction has led to a unique condition that results in cognitive deterioration and physical mutation known as the troglodyte degeneration contagion. These conditions have plagued those that survive in the ruins of the pit and serve as the crux of the moral conflict of the DLC story. We don't get to see all of the city, just the small portion that we are restricted to in the DLC. There is definitely destruction, however it is important to try and parse out the nuclear destruction from the natural decay of neglect. Some damage, such as broken or fallen walkways and stairwells, seem to be the result of natural decay. Whereas the collapse of larger metal reinforced towers seems like it could indicate nuclear damage, or perhaps a combination of nuclear induced weakening and subsequent decay. Most of the larger and more notable buildings do not seem to have suffered much in the way of nuclear damage, and the bridge that the character crosses at the beginning does not seem to be greatly damaged either. Some of the smaller buildings have collapsed and serve as walls to contain the player to the game map. In my estimation, the fact that people seem so adamant to settle in such a dangerous place is a testament to how much of the city actually survived. The raiders' ability to use the old manufacturing facilities is probably the strongest evidence we have that the city was moderately damaged by nuclear weapons, with the more prominent and more reinforced buildings surviving without much damage, and smaller buildings or isolated portions of larger buildings suffering some damage. That is why I am considering the pit as falling into the class 2 destruction category, with the special caveat that the city suffers from unusual and dangerous radiation and chemical threats. Although I touched on this briefly in my mutations video, I thought it might be interesting to spend some time on the troglodyte degeneration contagion or TDC, since it seems to have a more detrimental effect on residents of the pit than the city's own destruction and decay. The first stage of the condition turns people into wild men, who are immediately hostile and antisocial, although they do seem to tolerate the presence of other wild men. Trogs are the end result of TDC, which reduces the mental capacity to a level considered non-human at worst and primal at best. There is also severe physical deformation and changes that occur. I propose that this unique condition is the result of heavy metal poisoning in conjunction with radiation. Heavy metal poisoning can come from a number of metals including arsenic, iron, lead, and mercury, but also includes many more. Some of these metals were being manufactured, namely iron and steel, but many more are used in the manufacturing process. High doses and prolonged exposure have been linked to a number of health issues, encompassing liver and kidney failure, but also have been linked to brain problems, memory loss, and behavioral changes. These seem to describe the cognitive degeneration experienced by the wild men, and this heavy metal poisoning in conjunction with radioactivity could explain the creation of trogs. Seems plausible since the detonation of nuclear warheads very likely could have atomized material, as well as caused old settled pollution to resuspend in the air to be breathed by survivors and coat the city. Number 6. San Francisco Pre-war and post-war San Francisco looked completely different from one another. A group of Chinese submariners were forced ashore at San Francisco shortly after the Great War and remade the city in the style they were accustomed to. We don't have a great deal to go off of when evaluating the destruction the city went through with vague references in written lore as well. According to the Fallout 2 strategy guide, the city is recorded as being hit hard by the nukes. No mention of how many strikes, what the level of destruction consisted of, or what did or didn't survive. However, in Fallout 2 when approaching the city, any encounters take place on a backdrop of ruined buildings. These buildings are almost entirely destroyed, save some random wall portions and sometimes just the foundations of the buildings themselves. Again, it is difficult to ascertain what destruction came from nuclear warheads and what was the result of the ravages of time and neglect but it is certainly possible that nuclear destruction played a significant part. I say this simply because if a house were to rot and fall apart, there would be rubble, since much of the material would stay where the house once stood. If these same buildings were hit by shockwaves, the force could detach roofs and collapse and carry walls various distances based on the strength of the shockwave. 
What is perhaps the most telling about the destruction of San Francisco, though, is the destruction that we actually don't see. What I mean by that is that downtown San Francisco looks like an older and traditional Chinese town that looks remarkably well built and taken care of. It is difficult to imagine that the Xi who built this new version of San Francisco would have gone through the process of demolishing large surviving buildings just to build their own. I think it is much more likely that the city was met with great destruction from the bombs that targeted it, which made the process of rebuilding on the same site easier, since fewer old compromised buildings would need to be demolished. There may even be more building materials since the destruction would have blown buildings apart, making it even easier for the Xi to rebuild. It is also important to note that the Xi landed in San Francisco a relatively short time after the bombs fell. So the destruction would have been almost entirely the result of the war and any ensuing violence, rather than natural decay over hundreds of years to when the game takes place. With all this said, we get a small glimpse in Fallout 4 of a memory involving Kellogg where the Golden Gate Bridge is shown out the window. What little information we can get from this scene is that the place he lives in is relatively nice, for Fallout that is, and the bridge itself is in remarkably good condition. In fact, it doesn't look like it has taken any damage at all. There also doesn't seem too much in the way of residual radiation at the time the game takes place, or, I would argue, not at the time of the Great War either, or else the Xi probably could not have survived there in the early days. For this reason, I would classify the destruction at San Francisco as severe or a class 3. Number 5, Chicago. Chicago was the primary base of operations for the Midwestern Brotherhood of Steel in Fallout Tactics. Because of the semi-canon nature of tactics, this is not hard canon, but in the absence of any other authoritative sources, this is the best that we can do. We also never know what or how much will be confirmed true in the future. Now, with that, we don't have much written lore of Chicago of what happened on the day of the Great War. We are, however, presented with a pretty good representation of pre-war Chicago and post-war Chicago, circa 2197. In the introduction, we see the skyscrapers and high-rises that make up the city, which is then almost immediately contrasted with a skyline view of the destroyed city. It can be seen that the stills from the game show a city that is severely damaged in the background, and although we aren't completely sure if it's Chicago, considering it has the same vehicle that is shown in the intro, I think this is likely. All of these buildings are depicted as being decapitated, with their steel girders and supports jutting out. This would definitely be the result of damage from nuclear blasts, as would a lot of the large-scale destruction seen by buildings missing most of their structure, or leaning treacherously to the side. Due to this evidence alone, I think that Chicago would classify as a Class 3 destruction event with the severe destruction having occurred. Number 4, Bakersfield. Bakersfield, California doesn't have too much in the way of written lore, but based on the in-game name of Necropolis, I think we can get an idea as to how the Great War turned out for the city. Described as a sprawling metropolis in Fallout, it had a vault constructed under the city that filled up as people forced their way in and as the end of the world came. The door purposely did not shut properly, and many of those inside died due to radiation, and those that did not were ghoulified. Hence, in Fallout, the city is inhabited mostly by ghouls when the player encounters it, and the name Necropolis seems very appropriate. Not knowing the details of the bombs that fell and their destruction, we can see both in-game and in stills what is left of the city. The large buildings are heavily destroyed, and it looks like most have lost the top portions, which I would attribute to the nuclear blasts. The intro to Fallout, according to the Fallout wiki, is Bakersfield, which I cannot confirm, but if that is true, then it confirms that the destruction done is much more than mere degradation with time. The fact that the radiation was so intense that it killed and ghoulified all residents of Vault 12 speaks to the destructive nature of the bombs that fell on and around Bakersfield. Bakersfield was met with a Class 3 or severe damage, with a particular emphasis on the dangerous fallout that fell upon the city, turning the majority of survivors into ghouls that would mark the city as the City of the Dead. Number 3, Los Angeles. The city of Los Angeles features in the first Fallout and is a very important in-game area. 
housing the cathedral, the gunrunners, the blades, and many more, the boneyard is a very interesting area. Unfortunately, there is a surprising dearth of information regarding the destruction that met LA. A pretty generic description of the destruction says that the city was ravaged by bombs and firestorms, after which people died from radiation, famine, and disease. From what we can see of the buildings in the boneyard when we travel there, certain sections are in much worse shape than others. Factions that have the means to rebuild have done so, and the Gunrunners building as well as the cathedral are in good shape because of this. All other areas seem to have the same level of destruction as most other buildings of Fallout 2. No doubt this is simply due to reusing the same assets across all cities in the game. However, although we don't get a good look at the city itself, there is an interesting thing to note when looking at the Fallout overworld map. Looking closely at the area around the Boneyard, which LA came to be called, we see an enormous crater just east and south. When I say this crater is enormous, I mean it. Just looking at the size of the crater and contrasting it with the size of the Boneyard itself, it may be half the size of the city itself. Looking at the size of nuclear craters that were made in the heyday of nuclear tests in the real world, we can try and understand how large this specific blast was. Guinness Book of World Records lists the largest crater as being the result of a detonation in 1965 in modern-day Kazakhstan, called the Chagan Test Detonation. It was underground and yielded a crater 408 meters wide. This is nowhere near the size of the crater we see on the Fallout map. So to get an idea of the size, I identified an area with Google Maps that was the most identifiable, which ended up being the coast from LA to Santa Monica, right as it turns and runs westward again. I measured from two points, since the coastline in Fallout does not perfectly match our coastline, which makes sense given what happened and how much time has passed, and the short measurement was 30 kilometers, with the large second measure measurement being almost 35. Seeing how on the overworld map, using the grid that overlays the map, this section is about 1 to 1.5 squares, depending on where you start. That means that each square has a side length of between 30 and 23 kilometers. Using this range, and looking at the enormous crater, it is roughly 2 squares in diameter, so it's probably between 60 and 46 kilometers in diameter. This is an outrageously large crater, and if it was not the result of one or a few very large bombs, it had to be the result of many smaller ones clustered extremely close together. Though, one would expect a group of bombs to create a crater that wasn't a perfect circle like we see on the map. So again, how exactly this enormous of a crater was created is not entirely clear. And even more importantly, how anything survived in Los Angeles after such a bombardment is equally unclear. Taking all this into consideration, I would classify the Boneyard as level 4 destruction, which classifies as extreme nuclear destruction. Number 2. Washington DC Perhaps not surprising to be so high on the list, Washington DC is the backdrop of Fallout 3, and intuitively, most people would imagine that there would be nothing left since it is the seat of the US government. That is not exactly true, although there does seem to be great devastation throughout the city. It may not be that surprising, for instance, that the White House is nothing but a crater and debris, but it is a bit surprising that the Capitol building does not seem to have been hit. Other well-known locations that did not seem to be directly targeted were the Jefferson Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial, the National Archives, and many of the museums. Most of these places seem to, at best, only have dealt with natural decay, and at worst, have taken just some structural damage from the bombs. We do know of a few locations that took direct hits, like the White House I mentioned before, but also Vault 87, Fort Bannister, and the so-called Cratered Hamlet just east of Big Town. The city itself has been hit hard by nukes and subsequent decay which is most obvious due to the impassibility of many of the areas. There are so many collapsed buildings and so much debris that the Lone Wanderer must utilize the underground subways to get into the various portions of Washington, D.C. Now, Megaton seems to have been built in the crater of a bomb, but the crater was not, in fact, created by a nuclear detonation. It was supposedly made by a bomber that crashed 
and the bomb in the middle of the crater was apparently in the plane at the time of the crash. The walls of the city were built with the remains of the plane that made the crater as well as other planes that were salvaged for their structural components. If this truly is the case, there are immediately more questions. How did a plane make such a big and deep crater? If the plane was so large or going so fast in order to make such a large crater, how did the bomb seem to survive without much damage to it? How about any other bombs the bomber was carrying? Was it only carrying one? And lastly, was it a Chinese or American bomber that made the crater? All but the last question don't seem to have a clear answer, because the bomb at the center is a megaton class bomb, which was American made, and can be found in plenty at Fort Constantine, meaning that it was an American plane that crashed. Although there are no hard numbers in lore about how many bombs hit DC, there are a number of craters that make it obvious that a good number of bombs targeted the city. This would make sense given the importance of the city, and as a result, there is very widespread destruction. Places like Vault 87 are so radioactive that it ranks amongst the most radioactive places in all of the games, easily killing anyone who tries to get to the epicenter. This level of destruction would classify as level 4, or extreme damage from nuclear weapons and subsequent radioactivity, decay, and intense fighting that is still taking place in the area centuries later. Number 1. Salt Lake City This may come as a slight surprise, considering places like Washington DC were very badly damaged. But, when considering the lore, I believe this takes the top spot for all the places we have enough information to validate. We do not have any visuals to evaluate the destruction of the city, but we are given pretty good details relating the destruction. There are two holotapes that give the most detail to the destruction of the city, left by Randall Clark and found in the Honest Hearts DLC. Randall was south of Salt Lake City when, in his own words, he recounted, First nuke hit Salt Lake City inside a minute. I was looking south, lucky man. Flash behind me so bright, the world looked on fire. Old couple from the Chrysler starts screaming that they can't see. Didn't watch you die, Char. Saved my eyes. Counted 12 more flashes in the next 7 minutes. Ground shook each time, 18 seconds later. When nothing hit for half an hour, I took a look. Globe of fire where you and Alex died. So, we know that 13 warheads detonated around Salt Lake City. Randall Clark then goes on to describe the destruction in another holotape. Departed April 10th. Walk to Salt Lake City took 15 days. Would have been 7 to 9 back in the old days, but had to circle pockets of radiation and forged along the way. Don't know what I was thinking. Imagined I'd find my house. Dig through rubble. Find something. Your bones, I hoped, and little nuts. Would have buried them. Here in Zion, maybe. Salt Lake City is mostly craters. Warped steel girders where high-rises sat. Mounds of bricks. Never found our house. Didn't even find the street. What wasn't a crater was scorched clean. Want to believe it was fast, a flash, both of you vaporized. Lies to make me feel better. I'll never know. Which part of the city got hit first? Northeast and you both died in a blink. According to this second tape, it does not seem like any building survived the destruction of downtown Salt Lake. He describes high rises as being warped steel, buildings being mounds of bricks, and the city as a whole as mostly craters. In his attempt to find his home, he could not even find the street he used to live on. He also describes extensive fire damage, meaning anything that may have survived the blasts relatively unharmed, caught fire and burned very thoroughly. Lastly, he describes having to avoid pockets of radiation while he traveled, indicating that there is extensive radioactive fallout still present. With this description alone, I believe that Salt Lake City experienced extreme destruction or level 4 on our nuclear destruction scale, and takes number 1 in this list. This is it. That is my list. How did my evaluation compare to yours? Why do you agree or disagree? Like always, I want to hear from you in the comments. See you guys in my next video.